Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. If you're watching this video, you probably are in the situation where you want to install a smart thermostat and you need to add a wire. And so we're gonna show you a nifty tool to add a wire without having to run wiring through a finished basement or something of that nature. And uh, it's a quite an easy process. So we're gonna show you how to do it. All right, so here's our old thermostat. And as you can tell in here, we only have a Y wire, G, W, and R. Now with most smart thermostats, you need to have a C wire, which in this case would be right here. Now, instead of having to run a bunch of wa uh, new wire through walls and down into the basement, uh, we're gonna show you how we can achieve this without having to do that. And it's with this right here. It's called a ProStat Add a Wire Accessory. So we're gonna start by, um, if you're a DIYer, make sure you take a picture of where these go, but typically white will be W, R will be red, G will be green. Y most of the time is yellow, but in this instance it's blue. Uh, just make note of what where the colors are and where they go, and then we'll go ahead and take this old backing plate off. Now before you remove any wiring here, make sure that the switch at your furnace is turned off so that there's no power going to the thermostat uh, because the furnace is what powers our thermostat wiring. This is the thermostat we're gonna be installing. It's a Nest Thermostat E. So we're gonna unbox this and we're gonna go ahead and install our base plate. So these are the anchors that we're gonna be using. These things are my new favorite anchor. Uh, they are fantastic. All you do is drive this in with a hammer and then this duck bill will expand and it's perfect for um, thermostats and things that are small, but they still hold very well. So once we've found exactly where we want the thermostat to be, we'll take one of these screws and just make a little indention, one on the top and one on the bottom. Okay, so we just line this up with our little hole that we just made. Tap it in. Just like that. And we simply line it up with our holes and run our screws in, making sure that our bubble is where we want it. Looks perfectly level right there. Just lock it in, and our base plate is not going to go anywhere. This is the schematic we're going to follow since we have four existing wires R, W, and C will go straight to the HVAC equipment. So we're going to wire that in. We're going to make C blue because that's how I prefer it. So we're going to make our connections for R, W, and C. So we're just going to strip that. Press down the C button and slide it all the way in. And you know that it's locked when this stays down like that. Okay, so this green wire will connect to our little device we're about to put in here. White will go straight to W just like it was. And R will go to R. All right, so this is the next thing we're gonna be installing. This is our diode. And as you can see on our schematic, we're gonna attach the green to G, yellow to Y. So let's start with that. Green will go to G, just like that. Yellow to Y, just like that. Now we just have this guy. And as you can see here, blue will connect to blue on the other end. And we, what we're gonna do is use this existing green wire to make that connection. So we're gonna connect green to blue here, 
And then down at the furnace, we're gonna make our uh, changes to accommodate what we just did up here at the thermostat. Now, normally I would use one of these wire nuts, but I have seen these come loose several times and I do not like them. What we're gonna use is called a Wago lever lock. Now, as you can tell, it's not much bigger. It's still very small and you simply open these up, slide your wire all the way in until you see it hitting the back there. Lock it in and that's not going anywhere. So we're gonna do the same for our green right here. It's locked in. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna push these wires back and we're gonna feed this little diode into the wall. And then when that's in, we'll feed this little lever lock through this hole as well. So if you're gonna do this, um, make sure that this opening is big enough to accommodate a wire nut or one of these lock levers. All right, so everything is done up here. So we're just gonna put our faceplate on and then we'll head down to the basement where the furnace is and make our changes there. All right, so we're down here at the furnace and we're just gonna start by removing this bottom panel. This is a Goodman, so we'll have to remove both panels. Again, our power is already turned off up here. These are where all of our thermostat wires are connected. So we're gonna start by disconnecting this. All right, so we can see the labels of all of these now. These are the ones that come from our thermostat. So as you remember, green, we were going to disconnect. That's gonna to go to our blue right here at our out of wire. We're gonna take green off here. Just loosen it up. Now yours might be different. You might have like a bunch of metal screws on your board, but this is a newer one and that's how it's just designed. So we've got our green wire disconnected. We're gonna use our Wagos again. Just gonna slide this all the way in, lock it. And then we're gonna attach our blue wire from this guy. Man, if you guys are DIYers and you don't have these Wagos, go to my Amazon store and pick up a set because these things are amazing. Simply go to the video description and then you'll see my Amazon page here, all my favorite HVAC tools. And once you click that, you'll go to the electrical or the Wago section and you can find different variations as well as a variety pack that will have different variations of these. So check them out. Okay, so our blue connection is made. Now remember, we have blue connected to C at the thermostat. So down here, we need to make that change. We need to move blue to C. All right, so our blue wire is moved over to C. Now let's move on through here. So red from the Adistat will go to red on the equipment. And as you can see, both of these will go to red. So we currently have one wire on red and we're gonna take this red wire from the add a wire and we're gonna connect it right here. So that's good. Next, we'll move on to the green wire. Green will go to G, and that should be the only one on G. As you can see, there's nothing there currently. So we're gonna take this green wire, and we're gonna place it right here. Okay, next we're gonna move on to yellow, and yellow is actually gonna have two because this doesn't show the wire that goes out to the condenser. So as you can see, we've got our yellow there. This wire comes from the condenser and the other one goes to common. So we're gonna take our yellow. Loosen that up.
place those together, lock it back down. Okay, and last but not least, C brown is going to go to our C terminal. Now, for this particular one, we have three different connections. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to spin these all together. And that's going to make for a better connection. Now we can go through all of these and just make sure they're good and snug. And that's it. So we'll just plug this guy back in. And then we're going to mount this to where it's not just sitting on the bottom of the case. So we can go ahead and put the covers back on, flip our switch back on, and we'll go up to the thermostat. All right, so our thermostat has powered up. We're gonna go ahead and test the heat first. So let's bump it up to 73, make sure that the heat comes on and that we have heat coming out of the vents. Got nice hot air coming out of the vents. So both our fan and our gas and everything works like it should. So let's go back over here. We'll bump that back down. Wait for it to cool off before we turn the AC on. But we're gonna go over to cool. And we're gonna give that a minute to cool off. And then we'll bump this down to 68 or 69 and make sure that the condensing unit and the air comes out of the vents. All right, it's been a few minutes, so we're gonna bump this down 67. Looks like our condensing unit is on. And we got air cool. So everything on this thermostat is functioning. Now we have a C wire and we don't have to ever put batteries in this thing. It will stay charged. And that's how easy it is to put in and add a wire. This is awesome knowledge to have because if you just have a furnace that has an R and a W, this will make it compatible not only with a smart thermostat, but with air conditioning as well because you need another wire for that. Now, we're about to get into the cold and nasty months of the winter time. And if you're interested in setting your furnace up for emergency heat and making yourself prepared for that situation, check out this video. It shows how you can make your furnace compatible with any alternate power source, whether that's a solar generator. Uh, we did a video on how to power it with your battery of your car and a regular generator. So check it out and we'll catch y'all in the next one. Later.